I think Lindsay's covered it well. Um, and I guess I would just say that uh, he is managing as the, uh, our ranking Republican on the Senate Budget Committee this process, which um, we would hope would uh, be going a little bit smoother than it is right now, but that has everything to do with the Democrats. And uh, we now, it's now five and a half hours actually since the, almost five and a half hours since the last vote, vote started. Uh, and because there was an amendment that we were prepared to offer that actually had bipartisan support, the Democrats have uh, gone back uh, behind closed doors and, as uh, Senator Graham pointed out, tried to get the president on the line to pressure um, a couple of people uh, not to work with Republicans. And on an amendment, frankly, that saves $100 billion and makes a lot more sense when it comes to policy. So we're, uh, we're stuck right now where we are, and, um, and I hope this is not a sign of things to come. But uh, I do feel really bad for those uh, Democrats who have tried to work, reach out and work with Republicans. Uh, there was an effort made, I think, as you know, early on. Uh, there were a number of Republicans who came up with a proposal that's significantly smaller in terms of its overall price tag than the one we're debating today. But at a size that uh, most analysts and economists uh, now believe is much more aligned with what the need is out there. The Democrats' $1.9 trillion wish list is a bloated, wasteful, uh, and very partisan bill. And it's really unfortunate at a time when uh, a president who came into office suggesting that he wanted to work with Republicans and, and uh, create solutions in a bipartisan way and try and bring the country together and unify, uh, the first thing out of the gate is a piece of legislation that uh, simply is uh, done with one party rule without you know, consultation with Republicans or consideration of our ideas um, and, uh, and a huge price tag, $1.9 trillion with lots of goodies in there for Democrat special interest groups. We think that's uh, really unfortunate and uh, as I said, I hope it isn't a sign of things to come because I do believe that uh, Republicans are here to try and solve problems for the American people. And dealing with this pandemic is problem number one. But dealing with problem number one means vaccines, it means distribution of vaccines, it means helping frontline health care providers. Uh, it doesn't mean bailing out big district governments or uh, adding uh, unrelated provisions, and uh, including the bill that came up from the House, subway lines and bridges and things that, uh, that favor uh, Senator Schumer and uh, Speaker Pelosi. Uh, as well as uh, a whole lot of spending that doesn't actually impact the uh, country or anybody that's supposed to benefit right now. It's extended out into the future, 22 to 28. 95% uh, of the money that goes to the schools doesn't get spent this year. It's spent 2022 to 2028. It's hard to argue that that's a really emergency. So we're going to do everything we can um, to try and improve this bill. We hope that we, the Democrats will let us vote on the Portman Amendment. That unemployment insurance is an important issue, but one that needs to be handled in a way that encourages people to go back to work where we can get this economy opened up and creating jobs again. And uh, I think the Democrat uh, legislation uh, works entirely against that, but um, we will be here uh, as long as it takes to try and get our amendments debated and voted on to try and improve this bill and make it a better bill for our country. Senator Blunt. 